Do you enjoy sewing? Maybe you've been making some face masks over the last few months for yourselves, for your family or for your friends. I know many people have. They've been dusting off their old sewing machines and getting them out to do projects like this. People across the country have also been making scrubs for the NHS. I know a couple of my neighbours have been doing this. I've seen cars arrive with metres and metres of fabric, which I've heard that they've then been cutting the pattern out and making into scrubs, spending many hours at their sewing machines. In our Bible passage today, we met Tabitha, also known as Dorcas. She was a follower of Jesus and she was always doing kind things and helping the poor. We know in particular she helped the widows by making them coats and clothes. Now I can bet that she didn't have a sewing machine like this but actually spent hours with a needle and thread as she sewed these garments for them to wear. Tabitha must have had a heart full of love and compassion for the poor and those in need. And Jesus' love shone through her to the people around her. I wonder if our hearts are full of love and compassion for the people around us, especially those who are struggling and in need. It's this love that led to the kindness and generosity which we see in Tabitha. It's difficult to describe kindness and generosity, but we can all bring to mind times when someone has been kind or generous to us. Maybe there was a time when you were feeling sad and lonely and someone came and sat and spent some time with you. Maybe someone chose to play your game and not the one they wanted to play. Maybe you were feeling tired and somebody brought you a cup of tea. Maybe somebody sent you a card to say thank you or just to say hi. Or maybe somebody knocked at your front door at just the right moment or gave you a phone call or text to ask how you were. I bet you can come up with loads more examples. Let's just pause for a moment. And if you're on your own, bring to mind some times when people have been kind and generous to you. But if you're watching this with other people, why don't you just talk about and share some of those times with one another? Sometimes the greatest acts of kindness are actually quite small, like the examples I gave. However, sometimes the kindnesses can be really big and require the person giving to give up a lot. Over the past few months, there are some people who, working as key workers, such as in hospitals and care homes, have moved out of their houses and away from their families in order to protect and keep people safe during this time of the virus. People who are generous give so much, much more than it's expected of them. They give great time and energy to help people, being quick to help and provide. Tabitha used her God-given gifts and skills to help the most vulnerable people in the community. What God-given gifts and skills do you have? 
What are you good at? What do you enjoy doing? Maybe it's sewing, like Tabitha. Maybe it's baking or gardening, DIY, woodwork, listening, talking, caring for those who are sick, making people laugh. I could go on and on. We're all different. We all have different God-given gifts and skills. But these gifts and skills were not only given to us to build us up, to help us to do well for ourselves, but actually they were given to us for the benefit of others, to build them up, to encourage them, to help them. They're tools which can be used to show kindness and generosity so that Jesus' love can shine through us too. So how could you use the gifts and skills that you have to help others, to help those in need in our community? I'm sure many of you can think of ways that you're already doing that. But maybe there are others too. As we consider this question, it's worth considering another one as well. What are the needs in our community? Tabitha saw the need in her community. It was the widows. They needed clothes and she could help with that. So she used her creative gift to make them clothes, to make them coats. I imagine if she was alive today, she would have been one of those that was making the scrubs for the hospitals, for the NHS. This week, why not take some time to think about what those God-given gifts and skills are that you have? Are you using them or are you not? How might you be able to use them to help those in need in our community or to help other people around you? Why don't you ask God to show you what the needs are and to ask him to fill our hearts anew with love and compassion for those around us. To ask him to show us how we can be kind and generous. Allowing Jesus' love to shine through us as it did through Tabitha. For our craft activity today, I thought we could make woven hearts. As we think about the love that Jesus has for us and that we have for others and how that interconnects us all. So how to make one. What you need is two different coloured pieces of paper and then you're going to cut out a smooth mountain shape or an upside down U, you can think of it, and you want them to be exactly the same size. So it's good to cut the two bits of paper at the same time or have a template to do it. Then when you've cut out your U shape or mountain shape, you're going to cut the bottom bit as strips all the way up to the point where it becomes a um, curve. And again, it's good to do them at the same time so that you end up with the strips being about the same size. So I've got four strips in mine. You can see they look a little bit like jellyfish. And then what you're going to do is you're going to weave them together. So what you do is you take one colour, so the red for mine, and you go over the top of the white, underneath the white, over the top of the white, and underneath the white. And that is the first strip done. Then you just do exactly the same with the other, just starting the other way round. So over the top, underneath. It's a little bit fiddly, but you get the hang of it after a while. Oh dear. Now that's the second line and then we go along with the next one 
until you've done all your strips and you're getting interconnected. You're getting there as we weave them through. The important thing is just to remember opposite. So over the top, underneath, over the top, underneath. And you just need to straighten it out a bit until you have a heart shape. Oh, I've got that one in the wrong place. There we go. A heart shape like that. So you could leave it like that, but it's good to get a Pritt stick or some kind of glue and just stick your ends down so that it doesn't fall apart. And there you have it, a woven heart to remember Jesus's love and compassion for us and how we can show that to others too.